I'm Maldice. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this puffer coat. I really, really love the way this coat came out. Like, for real. I'm very, like, proud of myself for this one. So if you'd like to see how I made this coat, keep watching. Okay, so here are the fabric cuts I made. This fabric I'm working with is a sort of denim, which is crazy to me that uh, denim could look this way. But yeah, anyway. Here's the polyfill I bought at the fabric store. A little went a long way in this project. I still have more than half of the bag left after finishing my coat. And I had to go back and like de-stuff some sections of the jacket because uh, a little polyfill made the puff uh, very puffy. If you make this coat, I suggest lining your coat with this fleece if you want the coat to actually be warm because it was so cold when I went out to take these pictures and the videos of this coat and I was so warm and cozy like the fleece lining definitely adds that extra needed warmth if you live in a cold climate and want an actual warm puffer. Here's the front pieces. I'm going to add in seam pockets to these and assemble the two fronts first. I made the first front half first off camera just to make sure I could achieve my vision for the front of the coat. I was more than happy with the way the inseam pocket turned out. I think it's so cute. First I marked where I wanted my lines to go between the puff sections. If you make this coat where the lines go and how many lines go is completely up to you. My lines are 5 inches apart. This will be sewn to the insulated fleece lining from the shoulder around the neckline and down and across the lines leaving the side open to add polyfill. Mark lines on a smaller piece to align with the lines added to the larger front. This will also be sewn leaving the sides open for the polyfill. Trim off any excess insulated lining and begin to stuff your puffer. I ended up taking out a lot of this polyfill later as my coat came together. I hope that makes sense. What I'm saying is I had to later undo some of these seams and take out some of this feeling, uh, this polyfill. So uh, yeah, just keep in mind a little goes a long way. I used my finished front to make sure I was stuffing the side with an equal amount of polyfill so both fronts would be equal. Then pinned the open sides closed and sewed those sides closed. I cut two outer piece rectangles for the opening side of the pocket and the pockets to be big enough for my hands. Assemble the pockets by laying the outer fabric on the lining, right sides facing, and sew together. Then lift the outer fabric the right way and top stitch. Line up the pocket pieces on the two fronts, right sides facing, so that they'll line up when the two are sewn together. I lined up my pocket pieces with the second line to make sure they'd be even. Pin and sew.
Line up the two fronts and the pockets, pin and sew. I trace lines on the back fabric to match the lines on the front by making sure the measurement from the shoulder down to the first line was the same on the front and back. Then drew the rest of my lines 5 inches apart like I did on the front. Sew from the shoulder, across the neckline, down one side and across the lines. Then across the bottom. I measured from the shoulder to the first line to take note of where my first line would be measured on the sleeve, then stuff the back of polyfill and close the open side. Line up the back shoulders with the two front shoulders. Pin and sew. I measure from the center top of the sleeve the measurement from my shoulder to first line on the back from my first line. Then measured five inches again between each line. Sew leaving one side open and add polyfill and sew the open side closed. Now find the center of the curved edge of the sleeve and pin the center to the shoulder seam. Pin the curved edge of the sleeve to the rest of the armhole. Sew then repeat with the other sleeve. When I was sewing this jacket, I forgot to take into account the amount of bulk that uh, the lining, the thermal lining, would add to the sleeves. And when I first tried it on after closing the sides of the jacket, it was way too tight. I felt like my circulation was being cut off. Thankfully, it wasn't a hard fix. I just had to cut the armhole down to make it a bit wider. And I added a, a panel of fabric right here. And it's lined with a the thermal lining too. It just doesn't have any polyfill inside of it. You can put polyfill inside of it if you have to do this, but I'm very happy with the way it looks. I even think I should have added that into the design initially. So, happy accident. Okay, so now you're gonna measure around the neckline and cut two outer fabric and lining fabrics the length of the neckline by the height you like your collar to be, plus seam allowance. Okay, so you're cutting two rectangles, which are going to be the collars, and you're adding seam allowance to them. Sew the outer fabric to the lining along one side, wrong sides facing, or inner sides facing. Then sew the two collars together along the edges not sewn yet. Okay, so you're going to sew all four pieces together across the edge that you did not sew the lining to, the, to each collar piece. 
you should end up with something like this. Fill one side with polyfill. Then pin the empty side to the collar of the coat, right sides facing. I can't find a video of these wristband fabric cuts, but I folded them in half and sewed along the side. Then fold in half so the seam is inside to create the wristband. The wristband will be sewn to the sleeve by stretching it to the length of the sleeve hole, like this. So sew the collar on. Then sew the wristband onto each sleeve. The wristband can be a little tricky to sew on, so I just took my time and uh, you know, try not to break my needles. This is how the wristbands look sewn on. And here's how the collar looks sewn on. Stuff the empty side of the collar with polyfill now. Assemble the fronts of the lining by sewing the two fronts of each half together right sides facing. Then top stitch. Now assemble the rest of the line in the same way the coat was assembled. Once the lining is assembled, pin the lining to the edge of the collar, right sides facing. Then pin the bottom of the coat to the bottom of the lining. Sew the lining to the coat along the top and bottom. Now pull both sleeves inside out, the lining and the coat sleeve, and sew the opening of the lining and coat sleeves together like this. Make sure the sleeve wristband is inside the coat sleeve. Now, pin one side of the zipper in, marking where the lines meet the zipper on the unpinned half of the zipper. Sew the zipper in with a zipper foot. I 
I zipped the zipper again and remarked where the lines were and pinned the other half of the zipper to the coat. Sew that side of the zipper to the coat. And that completes this project. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know what you think of this jacket. And if there's anything you'd like to see me make. Bye.